And they said, do you have the Delta variant? And we're like, we don't know because they can't tell us. We've asked and asked and nobody knows the answer to that. Now, Tan, questions emerging regarding how the health department is finding and reporting cases of the Delta variant. That answer tonight in a live report. And wet weather dominates the middle of the work week with storms and flash flooding. Will it hold on as we close things out tomorrow? Answers in Utah's most accurate forecast. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC 4 News at 10 starts now. Welcome to ABC 4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. Emily Flores has the night off. We do begin with the major storms delivering a taste of winter to the high country. You can see in the picture light snow falling across the high Uintas and potentially some of the highest peaks in the Wasatch and at Snowbird about an inch of snow covering the summit. Anyone who is headed outside above 9000 feet should be prepared for a jacket and snow gear. With that in mind, we turn to our first forecast. Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy standing by. And Alana, what's going on here? Oh. Winter in August. Glenn, snow in August, thanks to the low that came through the area. And we did see that snow holding on even into tonight. Look at this video. This coming from Luke. This is up at Alta right now as the last few storms that push through the Beehive State are delivering to the high country. It's really right around 9, 10,000 feet that we're seeing this. But we know it is out there tonight, but it was rain in the valleys and plenty of it. We watched that wraparound moisture impact the eastern side of the state and northern Utah. By this afternoon, storms were brewing in the northwest corner of the state and they pushed along the Wasatch Front impacting Salt Lake with soggy conditions tonight. Also Davis and Tooele counties. Now we're starting to see things dry out. And we're going to continue to do that. Pinpoint Doppler radar really gives you that idea of where those storms are tonight and we know that they're starting to dwindle in the northern and eastern side of the state over near Moab and the Four Corners area. We are dealing with those storms starting to diminish, which is great news. We keep our eye on that satellite, which shows you the cloud cover that has really set up shop throughout northern Utah. Now, taking a look at the radar, you're able to tell that we've got some storms still out there in and around Park Valley, but also the case in the central and eastern portion of the state. Big news when it comes to temperatures today. You know, we've talked about breaking records, heat records that is this summer, but here we are in August and our high temperature today was 64 degrees in downtown Salt Lake City. And yes, that breaks the record. It is a record low high. We also saw temperatures falling into the 50s overnight, not just in Salt Lake, but also along the Wasatch Front, places like Towilla, Duchesne, Evanston, Hanksville, all clocking those numbers way below average. On top of the cooler temperatures, we did see wildfire smoke wanting to hold steady. Thicker smoke right now in the northern portion of the state, as well as the southwest desert, where that smoke is headed as we close out the work week. Coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, over to you. Thanks, Lana. Iron County residents are dealing with another round of cleanup with flash floods sweeping through in the middle of the night. The Flying L Ranch is subdivision near Cedar City, suffering extensive damage after being inundated by back to back flash floods. Sammy Hunt says she's one of the lucky ones, despite three floods hitting her home in just 24 hours. This is what she saw Wednesday with nearly two feet of running water through her property for several hours. Just unbelievable. And it's not just us, it's our neighbors, it's our friends, our family. It's just so widespread in this city that no one's gone untouched. Iron County leaders are asking for extra hands to clear the area and cars to deliver sandbags to residents. All the rain didn't help our air quality. In fact, the storms actually made it even worse. The damp, smoky smell being described as a doused campfire or a soggy ashtray. The director of the Utah Division of Air Quality says our translucent air remains in the unhealthy category because the low pressure system drew in more wildfire smoke from California and Oregon, and then it pushed down to the surface where we breathe. With the, the low pressure system, it actually uh, concentrated the smoke at the valley floors. You can smell it, you can taste it, you can feel the burning sensation in your eyes and your lungs, and that's a good indication that your body is telling you that you're having a, an impact from that air pollution. Smoke will stick around for several more days until we get a major shift in the weather pattern. 